نحمده ونصلي على رسول النبي الكريم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين اياك نعبد واياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قال الله تعالى في شان حبيبي إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم سلوا وسلموا بارك على سيدنا مولانا محمد طب القلوب ودوائها وعافية الأبدان وشفائها ونور الأبسار وديائها وعلى آله وسهبه دائما أبدا سلاة وسلاما عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن شاء الله continuing our talk about Nabi Yusuf عليه السلام and as we mentioned last time we were talking about the beauty of Yusuf عليه السلام and relating that to رسول الله Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam You know, and as I said then that, you know When Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala takes the soul of the believer Rasulullah Sallallahu likened it to You know, pulling hair from dough You know, very easy now, This doesn't necessarily mean what we are seeing And so some people get confused with this um, You know, what what is apparent may be different than what is going on inside the person who is passing Uh, there's a narration where one of the only Allah when he was passing away you know, his son was doing talqeen kind of uh, reminding him to say the kalma la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah and as he's doing this you know the the only Allah he's saying not now not yet not yet not yet you know which confused the son much but then later you know he learned that what had happened was that shaitan had come to his father at that time and was saying to his father that, oh, you know, you have been successful against me. And of course, shaitan comes until the last second, you know, until the last breath he's there trying to deceive. Uh, and, and the only Allah was saying to him, no, you know, I have not, uh, you know, the, my, my defeating you is not complete yet. You know, my task of, of denying your purpose has not been fulfilled yet. You know, until that last breath is gone. So he says, so the sheikh was talking to Iblis saying, oh, you know, I haven't defeated you yet. Not yet. Uh, and the son, of course, was here, you know, understanding it in a different way because what he was seeing was different. So we have to keep this in mind. You know, a lot of people think that, you know, that somebody who has a uh, uh, apparently difficult time dying or dies in such a way uh, that maybe, oh, something's wrong with him. You know, like today or these days, people are talking about, oh, you know, you die from the coronavirus and nobody can be, you know, at your graveside and, and you know, die, you know, burying you is so difficult that, oh, this is not a good death. Um, Sayyidina Uthman, radiallahu anhu, you know, because of the conditions that were going on at the time that he was martyred, there were only 17 people there to pray his Salatul Janazah. And that was after three days you know, of waiting in, in the house uh, before Ali Radim pushed the issue and allowed him to be taken out and be buried. So, and Sayyidina Ali, Karam Allah you know, when he was buried, there were only three people that were there, you know, his sons. And that was because they were afraid that if it became known where he was buried, that the Khawarij would come and dig him up and mutilate his body. And so, so, you know, we have to think of all of these things. And so just what we're seeing doesn't mean that that's actually what's going on. But again, for the believer, because of his anticipation of seeing Rasulullah you know, or his expectation of seeing Rasulullah in his grave, Death is easy, you know, because he wants to see his beloved. So, now coming back to the story of Nabi Yusuf alayhi salam and, and you know, where we left off, you know, was where he was being sent to prison. 
And so when he enters prison, you know, there are two people that enter with him. Then when they see him, they recognize the good in him. You know, Allah subhanahu wa allows them to see the good in him. And so they come to him. And they say to him, one of them, he, he says that I see myself in a dream, you know, pressing wine. And the other says that I see myself in a dream, carrying bread on my head and the birds eating from that bread. So we ask you for the interpretation of this, because we look upon you as, as muhsineen, someone who does good. So Yusuf al-Islam, he says to them, you know, he says that, you know, I will inform you, or you will be informed of the interpretation or the meaning of this before your provisions or before your food arrives to you. You know, before the food is brought to you, I will inform you of what this means. And I'm going to go over the initial part of the conversation and then go back into the, the things that we learn from this, so the lessons that we get from this, uh, and particularly certain aspects of it that, that in today's society is overlooked uh, and also attacked in different ways. So he says, I will tell you about, you know, that before the food comes, you know, I will tell you about the interpretation of this, and this is from what my Lord has taught me, you know, because I have rejected the religion of those who worship worship other than Allah, you know, and those who deny the hereafter. And for me is the religion or the way of of, of my fathers, you know, Ibrahim, Ishaq, and Yaqub, you know, and we do not associate anything with Allah and the uh, so we do not associate anything with Allah and then the the uh, for me it's the religion of my forefather millet what the what the millet Abba Ibrahim wa Ishaq wa Yaqub that for me is the religion of, of my uh, fathers Ibrahim, Ishaq, Yaqub, and we do not associate anything uh, with Allah, you know, and uh, uh, and that we are uh, that this is uh, this is uh, what He has been grateful to us for, and upon the people. This is His gratefulness, or this is His His blessings upon us and upon the people. But most of the people, you know, they do not. Uh, except or they are not thankful rather and of course ungratefulness uh, and kufr Allah SWT equates these two you know ungratefulness is disbelief uh, and so he says this to them and then he says to them that you know what you worship that you worship you know other than Allah uh, are things that you have named or come up with names for yourselves, you and your fathers. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, he says to them, is it not better uh, that you worship uh, the one to, uh, that none other than Allah, the one, the prevailing? Yeah. And then he goes into the interpretation of the dream. So before he tells them the interpretation of the dream, he invites them to Islam. You know, he preaches to them, invites them to Islam. Uh, but, you know, as far as the lessons that we get from this, some of the lessons, or some of the lessons that we get from this. One is, right off the bat, he says that I will inform you of this before the food arrives. You know, and it's interesting here, he doesn't say, inshallah. You know, I'm going to tie this together with something that he says later on. Uh, and, uh, uh, and this is something very important when we start looking at Rasulullah Sallallahu himself. You know, because the saying of one whose saying is nothing other than what Allah wants him to say, then how can you say that he forgot? But he starts off with that, you know, I deny the religion of those, you know, who reject Allah and who reject the hereafter. And then, uh, then he goes on with saying that, you know, that I am upon the religion of my fathers, which is a very interesting point here, you know, because there are many people who are attacked for certain things that they do, 
and you know when they have no when they don't understand why they're doing whatever they're doing which they should understand it but they don't unfortunately but they say well you know this is what I've seen my my forefathers do and then you know the people attack them by saying oh you know see this is exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran you know when he talks about the disbelievers that this is what you know they're doing what their forefathers did you know but here there are important points to understand. When Yusuf al-Islam, he says that I am, I am upon the religion or upon the way of my fathers. His fathers were believers. And so, you know, if you're on the way of your far forefathers and they are believers, then you're on the correct way. Whether you understand that way or not is a different issue. But you are on the correct way. You know, and, and you know, for if you look at criteria as far as making rulings, you know, Imam Malik, rahmatullahi, one of the criteria for fatwa was, what do the people of Medina Munawwara do? You know, if they're doing something, then there is a basis for it because these are the sons who are the sons of the companions of Rasulullah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Those who saw Rasulullah and who have been continuing the, this uh, lineage uh, and this heritage on. So even their doings is a criteria for rulings. Because they are the sons of, of the believers. Mm -hmm. These people that attack the believers by saying, Oh, you know, why are you separating the Mawlid? You know, oh, you're just doing what your you saw your forefathers do. Well, you know, my forefathers were believers. So I saw them doing what, their what they saw their forefathers doing, who were believers. Yeah. Yeah. And this is where Abdullah ibn Umar, he said that the Khawarij are the worst of people because they apply the verses in the Quran that are for the disbelievers upon the believers. Yeah. And we see this even today. You know, somebody's celebrating the birth of Rasulullah or doing, you know, various other things about Fatiha and other aspects, you know, celebrating uh, the occasions of the various Awli Allah and, ah, oh, you know, you're just uh, blindly following your forefathers. Well, again, my forefathers were believers. I don't know what your forefathers were. Yeah. And in the Quran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala draws that negative connotation to, for, 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 to following the forefathers, it's to those whose forefathers were disbelievers. And this is what Yusuf al Islam is saying to these men. You know, he says, I have rejected the faith of those who uh, worship other than Allah and who deny the hereafter, and I am upon the faith of, or I am upon the way of my forefathers, again, who were believers. Whereas, you know, what you are worshiping, you know, he says, he says, you are worshipping or you are uh, worshipping other than Allah, those things which you yourself have given names and your forefathers have done the same thing. And then he says, he says, they have done this without any authority from Allah. In al illa lillah, and the authority is only for Allah. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives something authority, then to deny that, is also ungratefulness, is also kufr. You know, it, it, again, if Allah subhanahu wa gives something or someone some authority, then you have to accept that. Uh, I mean, and a simple example of that is the black stone. You know, there are Hindus like Nehru who said, oh, you know, and you worship, or you accuse of, of us of worshipping stones, and what are you doing, you know, going around the Kaaba and kissing the black stone? You know, us going around the Kaaba and kissing the black stone is by the authority of Allah. You say, oh, you, you, you accuse of us of kissing these stones, and why are you kissing the black stone? Well, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us and gave the authority to this stone that we should kiss it. We kiss it because Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi kissed it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also gave authority to that stone. That on the day of judgment, it will testify to the faith of the believers and, and testify to the disbelief of the disbelievers that come before it. Which also shows us, you know, again reiterates that when Ibrahim al Islam made the call, then Shaitan also made a call. Because if it's going to testify to the faith of the believers that come before it, 
and testify to the disbelief of the disbelievers that come before it. Well, you have to have both coming before it. But here, you know, again, he says you worship or you do this, you know, or you give loyalty to these things that have, uh, that have not been given authority but by Allah. So when we honor and respect someone because they have been given authority by Allah, this is in accordance with the Qur'an. Yeah, and this is one of the issues that the Khawarij again also brought against Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu. You know, their, their motto was, Inil hukmu illa lillah, there's no authority except Allah. This was their issue with Ali radiallahu that have you accepted arbitration? Only Allah can decide. No one else can decide. Well, I mean, yet in the Quran, Allah SWT has given various things authority. In life, He has given various things authority. He has given authority to the fire to burn. So if I put my hand in the fire and say, oh, only Allah burns, yeah, then I shouldn't be complaining when I got to go to the emergency room and get treatment because my hand burned. This is the authority Allah SWT has given it. And of course, Allah SWT has given authority to Rasulullah over the heavens and the earth. And the interesting thing here is, He says, is plural. That we have given you authority over. You, plural. You also in English is plural for those, for many of us who don't know. You know, you don't have to say you all like we say down here in the South. You is plural. Thou is singular. But sakhara lakum, we have given you authority over what is in the heavens and the earth. You know. He didn't give it to me. You know, I raise my hand and my finger and, you know, the moon doesn't do anything. I ask the sun to come back and nothing happens. Yet there are those whom Rasulullah has given authority. Allah gave Rasulullah authority to give authority. And He has given it to those whom He loves. And those who love Him. So Yusuf al-Islam in this conversation is talking about this. He's explaining this to these two people that, that He is preaching to, to come into Islam. You know, and again, the attack on those who celebrate the Mawlid or who do various things. How can you do this? All you're doing is you're following your forefathers. Again, my forefathers were Muslims. And the Rasulullah said in Say Hadith in Muslim that, you know, what the Muslims or what the believers consider good is good and what the believers consider this bad is, or uh, what the believers consider bad is bad. And if you look throughout the generations, celebration of the Mawlid has been ongoing through the generations. And it's important it is told to us by Rasulullah himself when he said that I, fa I fast on Monday because this is the day of my birth and the day first revelation came to me. Again, if there's no, if no significance to the day, then why is he even mentioning it? So we get, you know, a lot of these lessons from, from these surah, from, you know, from the stories of the Prophet. But again, we have to make that connection with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we have to that, can make that connection with what is going on around us. You know, the stories, uh, you know, the Quran is not a storybook. And then he continues on. Yusuf al-Islam, he continues on and he tells them the interpretation of the dream. And he tells, you know, the one who saw that he's pressing wine, that you will be freed and, and you will press wine for the king. And he told the other one who had been a cook that, that uh, you know, you will be executed and the birds will be eating from your head, from your skull. He tells them that these, these matters have already been decided. And so... He also, he tells the one who's, who is supposed to be freed, he says that when you are freed, then mention me to your master, to your king. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, he says, and Satan or Shaitan, he made him forget. You know, what Yusuf al-Islam told them came true. The one who was freed, 
You know, when he gets to the king, the shaitan made him forget completely. So years passed. You know, this wasn't like a few days. He forgot, forgot for a few days. This was years down the road. When now the king, he sees a dream. Uh, and in the dream, he sees seven fat cows. Uh, and then he sees seven lean cows that devour those fat cows. You know, and nothing happens to them. And he sees seven green stalks and then seven dry stalks. And so he turns to his, you know, his advisors and he says, I've seen this dream. You know, it upset him when he saw this. It was something very unusual. So he asked them, he says, what does this mean? So they say, ah, you know, you probably ate something or, you know, you just you know, had a, uh, you know, upset stomach or something you were thinking about and you just, you know, just, it's just dreams. It doesn't mean anything. But when he says this, the one who was bringing him his wine in his cup suddenly remembered Yusuf alayhi salam. And so he says to the king, he says, look, let me go, you know, meaning let me go to the prison and I will, I will inform you of what this means. You know, there's one who can tell you what this means. And so the king tells him, he says, go. You know, go and find out what this means and then come back and tell me. So he runs off and he says to, and he finds Yusuf al Islam in the prison and he says to him, he says, Oh, doer of good, you know, this good person, this is what's going on. I need to know. So, inshallah, we will pick up from here next time uh, and uh, talk about the interpretation of the dream. And as I said, you know, the statement of Yusuf al Islam in the beginning when he says to them, that I will inform you or you, you know, that even before your food arrives to you, I will have interpreted these things for you. And I'll tie this statement of his with the statement when he's sending his shirt to, back to his father. You know, and so inshallah we will cover that next time. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to take lessons from all of this uh, and uh, be able to apply those lessons. Uh, to our lives today and to be able to ward off the, the attacks of shaitan uh, in various forms. You know, especially when we are doing what is good and what we know that our forefathers did that was good and we are attacked on these points but oh, you know, that why are you doing this? Well, you know, again, just because I don't know why my forefathers did it doesn't mean it's wrong because my forefathers were Muslim. Uh, and, uh, you know, if they were not, then that would be a different issue. But if my forefathers are Muslim and I saw them doing this, you know, then even if I don't know the reality of it, then it doesn't, it does not negate its significance. You know, it's just, it, it, it just shows my ignorance. And so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help our, help us relieve ourselves of our ignorance. Uh, and we'll go into some of the issues or some of the uh, um, reasonings behind certain things later on, inshallah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa ala ala Muhammadin wa ala ala salli ala Sayyidina wa ala ala Muhammadin wa ala ala salli ala Rabbana hab lana min azwajina wa dhuriyyatin Rabbana wa taqabbal du'a Rabbana adhalamna anfusna wa illam tawfir lana wa tarhamna lana kunna min khasirin Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirat hasanatan wa kina adhaab al-nar Ya Allah uh, fill our hearts with your love and the love, uh, true love of your beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, his family, his companions and all of those whom you love uh, uh, allow us to uh, uh, stand up for what's right uh, and stand up against oppression throughout the world uh, and stand up for those who are being oppressed and give strength to those who are being oppressed whether it's in Palestine or Kashmir or Burma or, or uh, any other place in the world uh, or every place in the world where the Muslims are being oppressed uh, and especially the oppression of, of the souls uh, and uh, raise us up in a condition where you are pleased with us and we are pleased with you wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khayru khalqihi muhammadin wa alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in bi rahmatihi ya rahmatihi